Like I said, this song is called Subterranean Water Song. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Arizona, uh, episode, what is it? 97. 96. Don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, people, I, uh, first thing first, I want to thank T Triple C for making the Call Me Crazy show possible. And exciting news I came across today, courtesy of our Marty. The director of our new movie, or I should say his new movie, which I'm uh, a movie actor in the movie, called Marijuana, and it's going to be showcased, uh, it's going to be showcasing on my show pretty soon. It's going to be a total of about eight airing of Los Marijuana, excuse me, heading down to the Mexican border, starring uh, Marty Cotola, Paul Navarro, and me, plus the cast and crew. Uh, various TV shows, including uh, the other television, the Call Me Crazy show, the stupid show, In the Zone, and countless others. But uh, I think it's great that uh, the movie is finally about to be released, and uh, hopefully all you people out there in TV land will be able to enjoy it. And another tip I want to be able to tell you guys too is that at the end of television, it's now going to be transferred to Friday as of next week next week next Saturday it's the final Saturday night show of the end of television it's been a long run the good news is that it's gonna get jumped to Fridays at midnight at the same time so all you viewers who uh, stay tuned for the end of television make sure that you're aware that the end of television is gonna be from now on as of two weeks gonna be Friday night so that's the exciting news and I'm excited because uh, I've been working on material for my second album and hopefully you guys will be able to hear it soon enough. Uh, it's going to be including songs that I wrote. Uh, 
total, hopefully by the end of, uh, of fall, we'll have, we'll all have a total of eight songs to unleash, including songs uh, I wrote last year and the year before. And the name of the album, people, is called Jump Off a Cliff. That's my new album, hopefully coming out in December. So, a lot of projects coming out this year, but Marijuana is the D1 that's going to get blow people away. And I'm excited and proud to be part of the project. So, uh, here, here goes the Comic Crazy Show, episode 97. Okay, in Alabama, a 14-year-old boy married a 42-year-old woman. A lot of people in Alabama think it's wrong that a 14-year-old boy married a 42-year-old woman. And all I gotta say here in the neighborhood, I think that a 14-year-old boy marrying a 42-year-old woman is nothing really to sneeze at because uh, no one really cares in Tucson, Arizona if a 14-year-old boy married a 42-year-old woman. And basically myself call me crazy. I think it's hilarious and funny. And uh, I, I wouldn't be too preoccupied uh, people are trying to rally up support for their opposition to this marriage. You know, it's America. If a 14-year-old boy wants to get married to a 42-year-old woman, that's okay. Because you know why? Because the 14-year-old boy is going to get a lot of high fives. But if a 14-year-old girl tries to marry a 42-year-old man, no one get any high fives. So that's, that's the thing. So. The thing also about the Alabama marriage that touches onto a subject that I'm going to jump into now, uh, pedophile. A lot of people say that the woman is a pedophile because she, marrying, uh, the, she married a 14-year-old boy. We're bringing up to the pedophile case of a priest, of a certain priest uh, who died in prison a while back, maybe two weeks ago. He's not even worthy enough for me to mention his name, but we all know who he is and he was strangled in a jail cell in Boston two weeks ago. And uh, the guy who did the murder, murder who killed the priest, former priest, I should say, uh, he was already serving a life sentence for a gay bashing murder he did a uh, decade before. So he was already in there for life anyway. So uh, pedophiles are ranked down on the food chain, as we all know, in prison. So he only had what was coming to him and a lot of people say that he uh, did over over, over uh, a hundred, uh, he molested over a hundred boys, I believe, that priest. But uh, he got strangled and also his lung was punctured and some more injuries were uh, brought to him before he died from strangulation. So he only had what's coming and hopefully that former priest is getting uh, uh, the Aino probe by uh, Legion Satan himself down in hell, and hopefully uh, it's painful. Okay, so that's that. Uh, so that's about that. Okay, then also this week is uh, also the the last time you can uh, uh, let's see sign up for a thing uh, called Do Not Call List, and what it is is for people who receive too many phone calls from telemarketer and solicitors trying to sell products or contracts or whatever and you have till the end of this week to put your name on the list and register up uh, to be placed on a list that says that tell us the telemarketers do not call which I think is a great thing because it's a national list so basically the whole uh, the nationwide business uh, area is going to be able to not call you if your name is not on if your name is on that list. So it's a good thing that that's a good thing that uh, is able to be uh, clarified of. Okay, and also yes, in uh, Iraq, uh, there's been uh, the UN bombing uh, killed uh, 12 last week, also killing a, a top UN diplomat uh, from Brazil. UN worker. Okay, and as of yesterday morning, a, a, a Iraqi suicide bomber blew up a mosque, killing 88 now. And here's the crazier part, is linked to Al-Qaeda, who we all know who are responsible for doing certain things a couple years back. But it said that Al-Qaeda blew up the Iraq mosque in uh, Iraq. And so it, it's, it's all tie in from from God knows when. I, I firmly, firmly believe uh, 
if Ronald Reagan was able to take care of certain things back when he took office uh, for eight years back in 1980 to 88, if he was able to work on certain problems that were going to be uh, having long-term effects on us now, he should have been able to fix them. Uh, but there was nothing he could do, I guess. And it's still my book. I know Ronald Reagan is dying, but I don't give a fuck about that because he deserves whatever painful, uh, whatever, I don't even think it's a painful death that he's going through. It gets the more emotional uh, trauma that he's going through right now. But uh, he's an evil man. He was responsible for a lot of evil in the uh, Reaganomics era. So, uh, fucking, I hate Ronald Reagan. Okay. Also, a Russian submarine that had nuclear reactor had a uh, technical problem and it sank, killing nine of the ten crew members. And this is the Russian Navy people. We've got to remember, I uh, remember three years ago in August, as a matter of fact, I believe, uh, they had uh, the uh, uh, Russian submarine Kinks, I, Kinks? I don't remember. A uh, Russian submarine uh, sank three years ago, 118. Uh, uh, Navy sailor died in there, leaving no very sad. Uh, Vladimir Putin, who's uh, the president of Russia, uh, uh, failed to act responsible, or uh, act responsible in the face of the tragedy that happened with the Russian Navy because he was slow to respond to the accident. He took forever in letting the international community know that he was having trouble with the Russian Navy and the, the submarine to say. But come to recent events, a uh, second Russian nuclear submarine sank, killing nine. And the uh, environmental control group are concerned about radiation levels. They did testing above the water where the Russian submarine sank. It does have nuclear reactors. And the water there, radiation, a radioactive chemical, it's a little normal in the water. But it could get worse because it's only uh, 190 miles away from the coastline. And I'll get back to you more on where it's at, but I don't know where the Russians... Uh, it was being hauled. Uh, it was going to be due to be dumped away. The chemical, the radiation, and the submarine. So bad news about that. Okay, here in the U.S., I also get found out... I guess saw The Exorcist, the 1973 movie uh, made by... Uh, um, I forgot who made the movie. Uh, don't remember. But it was made in 73, starring uh, the little girl we all know who played Reagan in the movie Linda Blair. But uh, recently this week, I saw an article in the paper and also on the news uh, at a strip mall here in America, in the good old USA, uh, at a strip mall church. Uh, these people were having a church prayer meeting and trying to uh, 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 perform an exorcism on a four-year-old autistic kid. And what, uh, what autistic means is uh, the kid uh, was not able to speak a uh, word, doesn't suffer any emotional uh, trouble, can't feel. And a very, teach, uh, very, very touchy subject because I, I know of two kids already who were autistic and uh, it's nothing to be sad about. It gets a different term of way of how they deal with certain things, in which in their case is everything they have to deal in their own way. But uh, the four-year-old kid uh, unfortunately died due to the fact that he was uh, uh, smothered to death because what these people did at the church they covered a four-year-old autistic kid with a blanket and a sheet and he smothered to death because they they tied the, the blanket around him so tight that he wasn't able to breathe and the boy uh, uh, stopped breathing and it wasn't until maybe four minutes into the I guess the ritual or the prayer that they were doing that they noticed that the boy wasn't breathing and when they pulled the sheet off the boy was already dead so as uh, far, as far as I know, the the general preacher is the guy who led the congregation to do that fucking dumbass mess. Is a uh, charge worth manslaughter, I believe. Get back more to you on that. It gets crazy to think that uh, that kind of stuff reminds me. I, I, I'm sad to say that the four-year-old boy died. 
that's a very uh, uh, bad way of dying. He didn't deserve that, we all know that. But that kind of mentality that the people were doing in the church, uh, in the church door, at the door, and it was a church also, that the mentality there is that, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna perform a ritual to see if we can get the demon out of the four-year-old boy who's clinically autistic. And that mentality reminds me of something like a Stephen King story, short story that he would write, where that, that religious uh, uh, fanatic idealism, it gets uh, driven to a point where uh, they murder, and, and in their eyes, they have not murdered the little boy. So it's very bizarre that there's people out there who believe that they can pull out demons from kids. So I hope they all fucking, uh, if it was, a, if it was a, a just world, they will all go to jail or whatnot, but they'll probably get some fines, and we'll see what comes out of that. Okay, uh, the Chili Peppers, the Hot Chili Peppers, are gonna have a new album out November 11th, and it's the greatest hits album. Okay. Okay, and MTV Awards, only one thing I want to talk about, uh, MTV Awards. It's the best MTV Awards show I ever saw, only for one scene between Madonna and Britney Spears. Alrighty, and, uh, okay, in Washington, uh, it was, uh, it's been a long time since the nuclear bomb was, uh, ever detonated, and that was in 1945 in Japan. Remember that? That was the summer of 1945, and six days after the second atomic bomb blew up, uh, Japan surrendered. Okay, in Washington this week, uh, the name of the plane that dropped the, that dropped the first atomic warhead, the name of the plane is called the Enola Gay, and believe it or not, that's the name of the plane. And what they did, they reassembled and rebuilt the plane, and it's now as a monument in Washington a Museum, uh, celebrating the fact that it dropped the first nuclear warhead. What it doesn't do, this, this sh it's basically the whole half of the aircraft in the Spiegel Museum, the Enola Gay, and it says it's the plane that dropped the first nuclear warhead ever known to mankind that detonated killing uh, 140,000 in each city, plus countless others down the year. But, uh, what they failed to do at the exhibit is to put the aftermath of what the nuclear bomb did. They didn't put no pictures, there is no mention of the Japanese victims, no mention of the radiation it caused, uh, no, no mention of all the uh, uh, bad things basically that came out of the, uh, the nuclear warhead being dumped over there. And, uh, and, it, and what it does, I think, is celebrating the fact that we are a superpower, the U.S. is the superpower, but also I like to think that we're a superpower that has a genuine uh, sympathy for the average man who works hard and will pay uh, the price of freedom by death, and that's what America is about, but I also think that they should post the picture of saying, you know, hopefully we'll never have to dump a nuclear warhead or shoot a nuclear warhead at anybody. That was from 1945 that that happened, and that ushered in the new age of uh, modern horror in the war era. So hopefully, uh, the people, the politicians in Washington, will be uh, will be more considerate in, in choosing more uh, ideas for the exhibit of the Enola Gay, because it doesn't show anything. It gets the plane saying the the plane that dropped the first nuclear warhead that was detonated. So. It's sad to think that Washington is going to celebrate the fact that we can kill hundreds of thousands of people. Hopefully we'll never be able to use it. Okay, and uh, I'm out of here because I'm off to go do live TV for the end of television. Where's Marty on the end of television? Okay, people, this is episode 97. I'll see you some more in a little bit. And we're going to do some, uh, uh, some crazy things on my show pretty soon. Uh, episode 100. Me. And uh, I'll see you in a couple minutes. Uh, hasta la vista. Oh yeah, and I forgot Arnold Schwarzenegger is running for governor of uh, California. And I, as I, I remember two weeks ago on the on the air, 
uh, not on the air, but off the air at uh, downtown doing the end of television, a female caller called up and told me that in the movie Demolition Man, Arnold Schwarzenegger would voted uh, governor of California in the future in the movie Demolition Man during Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, and then that Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie went on to become president of the United States. So I do want to say thank you, female caller, for letting the other television call me crazy know about that. But also, in 1977, Arnold Schwarzenegger had an interview with OA Magazine in which he stated that he had a... Uh, uh, and I believe it, I read the interview in 1977, he said that uh, he t participated in the uh, orgy with a single female at, at the gym that he was in in 1977. He goes into details about that in 1977. And that, uh, that he was into orgies and smoking hash and smoking weed. And this guy is running for the governor of California, people. So let's vote for the guy. All right, people, I'm out of here. Late. I'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, people, uh, this is the Comic Crazy and the Television Viewer Mail. This is uh, from. Uh, this is from. Uh, it's 7KRFO303, email name. He says, I'm in a local band and basically we're wondering if there's any way that we can make an appearance on a show in the near future. If you'd like to check our website, here's our link, code L equation. So thank you very much for writing in. We'll keep you posted on the idea for you appearing on the show. It just might be a possibility now to the fact that uh, Friday nights is now going to be the new time for the end of television. So thanks for writing in, uh, letting us know about your band. Okay, <clears throat> then we got another viewer mail. This is from Bram Ramp PG. Hey, you call yourself crazy? Well, I know the show I seen was really old, but if you are still crazy, come to this haunted house with me. It's a, it's a crazy thing, for real though. But if you write me back, my name's Jay, so put that in because I'm on my friend's comp. Or hit me up at 4000000 and leave a message later. Okay, well, thanks a lot for writing in, Bram Ramp PG. That makes it uh, really good to know that people are watching the show. And we've been trying to, I call that number. Uh, twice already, so I haven't received anything, or I, I didn't get receive any messages or whatever. So I'll try again, Brand Ramp PG. So thanks for writing in, viewer. You know, at the rate we're going, we're gonna have to fill up a couple more uh, filing cabinets because as, as, as of right now, we have one and a half filing cabinets filled of viewer mail. Unfortunately, half of them are rated triple X, but that's okay. Okay, people, I'm out of here. The Common Crazy Show, viewer mail. Thank you for writing in. Uh, hasta la vista, baby. Late. Late. Let me take you down. 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 Bueno, people, the Call Me Crazy show here. I'm very happy to be here. I want to be able to thank Peach C and Marty, the editor, for making the show possible, and you, the viewer. First thing first, I want to be able to say that hopefully you watch the movie Los Marihuanos. That was a movie that we made, we started making 18 months ago. Hopefully you've been enjoying the movie previews of uh, the movie. Okay, and first thing first is uh, somebody wrote me a letter, or wrote us a letter, I'm sorry. Wrote us a letter uh, saying pretty much a good review of the movie. Uh, the guy's name is uh, James and, and his wife, Rebecca Jackson. And they wrote a letter saying they love the movie and that uh, basically making us feel 
better about our product that we made because I have more viewer mail saying they like the movie and hopefully we'll be able to make more movies. So I'll talk more about that when I can, when I'm able to interview some of the uh, cast and players in the production of that movie. Okay, first things first, I'm trying to be uh, keeping you guys in uh, current event. As of yesterday night, uh, I just found out that the coach for the U of A football coach, uh, football team, John Makovic was fired after losing, I'm not even going to say the scores, but we've been outscored, outmanned, outplayed in every game for the past two and a half years, and apparently some of the players since last year felt that uh, the coach of the U of A football team, John Makovic, was pretty abusive to a point where several assistant coaches left because they couldn't work with the guy, and then last year, 44 players held a meeting with, uh, I think with the sports director, I'm not sure, uh, basically saying that they were kind of fed up with Makovic's uh, coaching style. Uh, John Makovic was a coach for the Kansas City Chiefs back in the day, and he was fired last night, and a lot of people in Tucson are very happy because everybody I know who loves the U of A football team is glad that he's gone. Some were, were telling me that they wish Dick Toomey would come back, but that's not the picture. Uh, basically, now the assistant coach is now the new coach just for the season for the U of A football team. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, we have a couple games right now. We're basically one, right now we're one and four. So at least we, the coach is gone. A new era can begin. And hopefully we can forget about this season and go on to the next one for next year. But um, another thing I want to talk about before I, I, I go to is... Uh, more and more, when I read the papers every day, I've been noticing noticing that uh, now the death or, or casualty on the U.S. side in Iraq is not really front page news anymore. Now it gets a little byline saying two GIs killed in Baghdad due to the fact that they were at a roadblock and a, a bomb blew up or what or whatever. It's getting to a point now where there have been more uh, soldiers killed than what the uh, soldiers were killed in the war. Basically, uh, George Bush said back, back in May that the war was over and now we have more casualties mounting on the fact that there's more soldiers dying due to the fact that the war is over. So now what I want to be able to say is that I know some Vietnam veterans and they're basically saying the same thing that morale it's probably a bad time and I pray for all those um, soldiers and armed forces because they're doing a kick-ass job but I know it's now to me at a historical viewpoint I think it's more of a it's had the more of a feel to it like a Vietnam War the Vietnam War back, was back in uh, the uh, late 60s and early 70s that was a real touchy subject for everybody back then now the Iraqi uh, uh, war that's going on it's very touchy now that more people dying on both sides and uh, what I want to emphasize too the fact that uh, it's the first time that uh, the US uh, in a long time uh, I think ever uh, did a first strike policy meaning that we wanted to go ahead and first and what I realized and what, what I've been reading about was uh, every war that's ever taken place since the Industrial Revolution began ultimately lost. Uh, Russia fought with Japanese uh, and Russia lost. Russia lost. France uh, uh, fought Mexico. France lost. So basically I'm saying, and I might be wrong on the Russian and Japanese war, I have to look up on that right now. Or hopefully later in another show. But I'll get more back to you on the Russian Japanese war that happened at the turn of the century. But France uh, tried to uh, make Me Mexico a uh, part of France and Mexico won that war. Uh, so now we want to go uh, pretty much invade Iraq and basically we're losing. We might be take we, we might have kicked out Saddam Hussein's uh, regime now, but now there's terrorists from all over the world going to to Baghdad and Iraq because they know that the US military is more strong there. So they're trying to help the terrorists that already live in Iraq. So it's a very touchy subject. It's too bad that too many soldiers and too many casualties on the other side are dying. 
on friendly fire incident. The other day, I read that the um, some U.S. soldier opened fire on nine Iraqi policemen by accident. They didn't know who was who. So they break the soldiers are bad morale right now. But keep it up, guys. And I know somebody up in uh, serving up there, not in Iraq, but up in Kuwaiti uh, city, or Kuwait city. But uh, you take it easy, people. I gotta go. I have to go to work. But hopefully, I'll get more in touch with the people who are responsible for Los Marihuanos, and I gotta get out of here. And my 100th episode is coming up pretty soon, so we're gonna have a little, uh, hopefully a clip for you before Halloween, called The Cave 2. Okay, people, I'm out of here, I have to go. Hasta la vista, people. Our next song called Spiral Invention is about when you fucking get real tired at night and shit. <laughs>